Okay, it's one o'clock. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to our <laughs> workshop on Zotero. Uh, my name is uh, Deaconess Micah. I'm the librarian here at Lancaster Theological Seminary. And we'll be um, talking with you, showing you uh, for the next hour uh, what uh, Zotero is, uh, what it does, um, and uh, how it might be useful to you, not only while you're pursuing your studies here at the seminary, but um, also as you continue your growth in education uh, beyond seminary. So um, I want to start off with um, a question, basically. Why would I want to use Zotero? Um, <laughs> It's an extra piece of software. Don't I have enough to keep up with already? Um, you know, we've already taught you a lot about um, using Chicago style and learning how to do that yourself. So if you're already feeling pretty comfortable with Chicago style, you may not uh, feel like you need an extra tool or help uh, with that. Um, or you may already be using some other kind of citation builder that uh, you found on the web. And you say, you know, why do I need to install an extra piece of software if I'm already using uh, Bibme or uh, some other citation builder online? Well, the, um, the compelling reason that I find for you all to use Zotero is that it allows you to cultivate your own library of resources. So you can store and file all the resources that you're using for the papers that you write in your classes, uh, for the you know, reading assignments that you get. You can also use it to track things that you just happen upon and just in your daily course of, um, you know, reading and keeping up with what's going on. Um, it becomes a file cabinet for you, a, um, a filing cabinet on your computer. So, you know, I'm, you know, pastors have always kept libraries of books in their offices. Um, you know, if you find an interesting newspaper article, you might clip it out and uh, stick it in a notebook. This is a way to do that um, paperlessly, digitally, so that it's stored on your computer and um, you can then do searches for things um, much more easily on your computer than you could trying to sift through a big stack of paper or a bunch of notebooks. <laughs> um, you know, like, I remember reading. An, an article three months ago. I think it was in the New York Times. What was it called? Um, you know, the, if you even knew a few keywords, you could type those into Zotero and get a list of um, sources that you had added there and um, hopefully find what you were looking for pretty easily. So, um, so this is, I want to stress that this is not a tool that well, I mean, I'll be honest with you. It's not a tool that you have to use while you're in seminary. And it's certainly not a tool that you would seek out beyond seminary. But it's a tool that's going to make your life, make organizing sources of information a lot easier. And it will enhance um, your information gathering and also the way you use information, both while you're in school and then when you're in your place of ministry. So I think it's a really um, handy uh, little piece of software. It's free, which is always a bonus uh, when you don't have to pay for it. So, um, and it's, um, this is open source software, so um, it's not free because it's ad supported. Right? When you download it and install it on your computer, you're not going to get a bunch of ads. 
uh, it's free because the developers that have developed it have been, uh, they volunteer their time to support the project. And uh, Zotero is backed by a very strong community of developers. It's been around for many years, at least 10. Uh, so it's a good, solid product um, that you're going to see uh, supported for hopefully many more years to come. So, um, to find out more about Zotero, um, you would go first, I would think, to the Zotero website. Um, I have that up on the screen right now. It, the website address is zotero.org. Um, hopefully you all got my message yesterday and have already downloaded Zotero and should already be somewhat familiar with this website, but um, you can go to um, the documentation tab. That's where all of the complete user manual, how to do different things, um, that's where you'll find that. And uh, the forums, that's a place where you can get help. So if you have a question or don't know how to do something, you can go to the forums and search to see if somebody else has had your same question or difficulty. Um, if you don't find a post uh, by someone else um, um, that deals with what your question is, you can um, make a post to the forum. Uh, as well. So I also want to um, show you the uh, library guide for Zotero. So this became live today and uh, tomorrow you'll find the recording of, of this webinar linked to the guide. So to get to our guides, you go to guides.lancasterseminary.edu or you can click on the guides link from the library's website. Uh, all of our uh, tutorial type guides are under uh, classified as topic guides and they're in alphabetical order. So Zotero is going to be the last one since it starts with Z. Um, but this is the um, Zotero um, the tarot guide uh, that I've put together uh, for our students here. There is a tab um, talking about downloading and installing Zotero with some uh, video tutorials there. Another tab for adding items, which um, I'll be demonstrating for you in a few minutes. And then another tab that talks about um, using Zotero to do your citations and bibliographies. So there, has, there is that on, uh, on the guide site. I've also prepared a uh, handout. And this uh, handout is also available to those of you who are on the, um, who are on the webinar. Uh, if you look on the webinar, um, on your webinar bar, I guess in the webinar, webinar window, if you scroll to the handouts section, you'll see a PDF linked there uh, called Zotero Handout. So on this handout, um, I give uh, five helpful features of Zotero, so kind of your top five reasons that you might want to use Zotero, and then uh, a summary of all the different ways that you can add sources to Zotero. So hopefully you'd find this um, to be a nice little um, cheat sheet as you're learning how to use Zotero and learning what all it's capable of. So um, are there any questions so far? Okay. Um, I didn't, I don't know if I said this in my email, but I did say uh, when I was asking you to go ahead and download Zotero if you're going to uh, participate today, uh, did you also set up a, an account on the Zotero website? No. That's uh, something that I want, um, want to bring your attention to. 
setting up an account, uh, you can do that up here at the top where it says um, log in or register. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I can, I don't think I can draw on it there, but um, if you just click up here in the, on the upper um, right corner of the website where it says log in, register, you can create a free account for yourself uh, on the Zotero website. What that enables you to do is um, it allows you to synchronize your Zotero library with their servers. You get 300 megabytes of free space to store metadata as well as uh, full text documents. Uh, depending on how much you put in Zotero, um, will uh, that will determine how much space you're going to need. Um, if you think you're going to be using Zotero to store a lot of full text documents, that's what's going to eat up your storage space. So, um, so you might not want to synchronize the full text, but the metadata uh, does not take up the, each metadata records. It's just a few kilobytes for each record. So 300 megabytes will store a lot of records if you're just storing the, the metadata. Um, so I would encourage you to go ahead and sign up for an account. It allows you to synchronize your uh, library with their servers. That means it's creating a backup so that if anything ever happens to your computer, you don't lose all your information. Uh, it also means that you will be able to access across multiple devices. If you have a computer at home and a computer at work, um, if you're linked in with the same Zotero account, it will synchronize from each of those computers. Um, also, there are several um, Zotero-friendly mobile apps. Um, which I did not, we're not going to have time to cover that in this workshop, but if you were using a mobile app to also add things to Zotero, um, you know, then that will carry over to all of your devices as well. You can also, um, you know, say you're somewhere uh, in a library doing research, your computer battery dies, uh, but you still need to access your Zotero account, you want to add a few more uh, sources that you found, you could log into a public computer, go to your Zotero.org, uh, go to the Zotero.org page, log in, and get access to your uh, collections uh, through the web page as well. So there's a lot of benefits for, for doing that, and I would encourage you uh, to get that set up before you get too much further using Zotero. Uh, so as you've probably already found when you downloaded Zotero, there are many different uh, flavors of it. Um, if you use Firefox regularly, like the Firefox browser, you probably opted for Zotero for Firefox, which um, basically uh, allows Zotero to run within your Firefox web browser. If you don't use Firefox already, or um, you just like the idea of running a standalone app, um, there are some advantages to that, then you probably installed the Zotero standalone. And so that's what I'm going to be, that's what I have on my computer, and that's what I'm going to be using today. So um, this is what it looks like. Um, the uh, You've got, you know, it's broken into three different windows or three different panes here. Um, on the left, you've got your library, um, which is the big box. And then uh, underneath that, you see I have a few different collections here. Uh, you can add a new collection by clicking this uh, folder with the plus sign. 
and um, that uh, creates a new collection. It's completely empty. When you are um, the middle pane, let me, I'll just finish going through the different, the layout here. The middle pane is your list of items, everything that's in that particular collection. Um, if you have anything attached to your item, uh, that would appear below that. So you can see this first record I have here. Um, the icon next to it is a book, so that tells me it's a, a book record. And then it's got, um, this is separate information that came uh, with the record when I imported it. Uh, the next one is a journal article. It looks like a piece of paper. That's what that icon is. It's linked to um, the actual EBCO, EBSCO record. So I can then click that link and go directly to the EBSCO record to um, access more information about that source. Uh, this one right here um, is another book. It has a note attached to it, um, a note that um, was typed in from the title page of the book. I'm trying to see if I can find one. So here's one that's a web page and it has a snapshot with it uh, so that I could, uh, if I click on that, it would take me directly to the to a snapshot of that article so that, um, you know, if the, um, if the link, say I take a, I import a record from a website and the website's not up anymore, I've still got a saved snapshot of what it looks like, uh, which can be helpful since the nature of stuff on the web changes quite a bit. Okay. Um, but we can, we'll, we'll talk more and look more at, at what you find here. Um, the third pane on the furthest to the right, that's going to be uh, when you have your item highlighted, that's going to be where all the information about your uh, source is located. Um, and uh, this is where if you notice there, if there are any errors or uh, mistakes in a record that you import, this is where you would make those changes, is in that pane. Uh, you can just click on it there, and, um, you know, for example, I know that the title should be capitalized, so I can change the capitalization, supplement series, so. And then that's, um, that's how I fix that. So that's uh, basically what uh, Zotero looks like, how you uh, get around it, get around with it. Um, so let's just kind of walk through how you might use it. And um, I did not, I, I will give you a disclaimer, I did not rehearse this ahead of time. And... I think that's a good thing because when you're using this at home, you will not have rehearsed using it. Um, so I'm hoping that as I'm um, going through uh, the next few minutes demonstrating how to add items, that um, you know we may run into a few little bumps along the road that you may also experience as you're using it. So together, um, you know, we can get through those you can see kind of how to, to navigate the, the software. So I'm ready to start my research. I've opened Zotero. I've started a new collection. And I notice that I have the new, the new collection selected here. 
And the reason why this is important is because when you start uh, browsing the web uh, or trying to get sources to bring into Zotero, it's going to automatically put them into the collection that's highlighted. So if you've accidentally highlighted the wrong collection, it's not the end of the world. You can still move your sources from one collection to another. Uh, but once you start using Zotero a lot and you have a lot of sources, um, you know, it might get, e you know, you might um, lose things uh, temporarily, but they're still there. <laughs> um, it's just a good practice to make sure that the collection that you want to add them to is highlighted. Now, if you don't have a collection highlighted or you just have my library highlighted, um, what that does is it just puts everything in your library. Then from your library, you can then um, click and drag, or you can um, right click. I think you can right click. No, you can't right click. Never mind. You can click and drag it to a collection. So. Um, you know, say this one I want to add to the new collection. It's not even going to do that. I thought you could do that. Hmm. It does seem like you should. I thought for sure you could. Maybe you do Okay. Oh, no. Well, somehow it got there. Okay. So, anyhow, there you go. It didn't look like I was adding it, but somehow it did. Um, so, yeah, so you would click and drag into the new collection from my library. That way, too, you can... Um, it only saves one copy um, in your library. You can then add the same source to multiple collections if you need to. Um, really, it's up to you how you want to organize your sources. So, but for purposes today, we're going to highlight new collection. Uh, we're in, and then I'm going to go over here to my um, web browser. So, at the time I installed Zotero, I also installed the Google Chrome plugin or extension for Zotero. So um, Zotero offers plugins for most popular browsers. Um, have, so can you, did you already install that extension? No. How about folks online? How are you guys doing? Did you, are there any, right, that's the chat, I thought there was a question. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not seeing anything from folks online. So, um, so anyhow, um, hmm. okay. So, to Tracy, what browser are you using? Right. Then the, the it, click on this and click on the download now button and then click there. I'm taking for the folks who are listening online. I'm taking uh, Tracy. 
back to the Zotero website uh, where he installed the Zotero software. And there's a uh, link to add browser extensions for, he's on a Mac, so it's either Safari, Chrome, or Firefox. And since he's using Safari, that's the one that was highlighted. So it downloaded, did it install? Well, let's go, it would be in the browser. If you click on your download, um, click on the download folder, you find. The Zotero connector, yes. Click on that. Um, and then it's, so now it says that you've added the Zotero connector to Safari. Okay, so if we close that out, why don't we go back to the catalog? There. If we uh, just do a search for me, any kind of search to pull up a record. Now we're going to check and make sure that Tracy's um, connector is working. Okay, and if you click on a click on a record, okay. Yep, if you mm -hmm. up there, mm -hmm, if you click that. And then go to Zotero. Mm -hmm. Let me just click on the Z oh, down there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. So, all right. So we've got the um, we've got these um, connector. Sometimes it's called a connector, sometimes it's called a plugin, sometimes it's called an extension. Basically what it is, is it's a way for your browser to talk to Zotero. So, um, and it's going to look differently depending on the, soft, the browser that you're using. So in Tracy's computer using Safari, his um, little button it has a Z on it, uh, and it can change uh, what it looks like depending on what the uh, what's being displayed on the browser, and it appears to the left of the browser bar. I'm using Chrome, and what mine looks like is a little um, page that's to the right of the browser bar. Uh, regardless of what browser you're using, the icon will appear somewhere in line with your browser bar, either to the left or to the right. Uh, so you'll just have to check and see what, um, what browser you're using and what that might look like. Okay, so let's start off with... Um, adding a record. I'm going to show you adding a record from a website. Okay. So um, before we started, I pulled up this article from the Christian Century website. So um, let's just pretend I'm a pastor and I like to go to the Christian Century every now and then to see what's being written about or talked about on the Christian Century website. I found this article um, about the uh, United Methodist General Board of Global Ministries moving out of New York City and think that that would be an interesting story to kind of file away. I might want to share that with my congregation. So um, I want to put that in Zotero. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click my Save to Zotero button in the browser. And it tells me down here at the bottom that it's saving to the collection. Um, and it um, looks like it's trying to take a snapshot. 
and snapshot turned from gray to black, which means it could have been successful. If you ever notice when you're trying to save something and a red X appears down in your um, down in that little status window, that means that it wasn't completely successful. Um, there could be multiple reasons why something wouldn't add successfully, but um, you can always try again or add it uh, a different way. But, um, so now I go to Zotero and I see uh, here is the article that I just uh, imported. It's already uh, default assigned it a web page for the item type. Uh, it pulled the title directly from the source. It did not get a name, an author's name. So I can go back to my source here and see that it was written by Linda Bloom and Christian Century staff. So what I'm going to do here is um, put in Bloom Linda and uh, that puts, um, that gives me an author. I could also add another author by clicking the plus sign there. I'm adding another author. I want to change the author field to a single field instead of last name, first name field because Christian Century staff is just one uh, corporate name. So I will type that in and that makes uh, sure that I get my author information. The website title, uh, well it went ahead and copied over this abstract which um, looks like was the first, um, it looks like it's just copied the first few, uh, first hundred words or so in uh, the article. So that's fine, I'll just leave that the way it is. Uh, the website title is Christian Century. It grabbed the URL. It saved the date that I accessed it along with the time. Uh, it also puts in the date it was added and modified. I can go here to snapshot and if I um, click on that it um, loads the page again so I see what it looked like. Okay, so um, if I wanted to add a note about this article, I could click on the notes tab and then add um, and then I could type in my note from when I was reading it like uh, this was a really interesting article. I want to share it with my congregation. Uh, you can also assign tags to it. So I'm going to give it a tag of GBGM. I'm going to give it a tag of UMC. Um, that way um, you can use tags as your own personal kind of cataloging system or labeling system so um, you know it helps you find articles uh, or sources faster later. So um, just another helpful feature there. Question, question. Yes, Tracy. Regarding what you were saying, if I'm breaking my outline up on the five words and I have the history of my I can use that in my tag sure. 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 Yeah. So Tracy was asking about uh, he's working on his DMIN project and trying to organize his sources for that, and asking um, you know can I use tags for um, basically you want to use your tags to kind of as you're finding your sources you can 
tag them for which section they're going to go in for your major project. And uh, yes, that's that's a good uh, use of tags as well. Um, yeah, the really uh, neat thing about software like this is that it gives you flexibility to kind of organize things in the way that makes sense to you. So you're not restricted to the way the library organizes it, or you're not restricted to the way um, someone else on some other website or in some other database uh, structure has organized something. Uh, you can create your own vocabularies, your own organizational systems that are compatible with the way you think and the way you understand all the different sources of information. So, um, let's, uh, just to practice one more time, um, here's another uh, website that I um, pulled up. This is an article um, that I found on a blog from the Pathios website um, about celebrating Halloween uh, with a little Star Wars reference for everybody. So let's, um, again, I'm just going to click that button there to save to Zotero. This um, thing down here in the bottom corner says it's saving to new collections and uh, you see the snapshot uh, came bold, didn't see any red X's. I come back to Zotero and there's the, um, there's the article. Again, it gave it an item type of web page. Now, if I wanted to change this to blog post, which is a little more accurate, I could do that. And um, that just changed a few of the fields that I had available here. Uh, it still carried over the title, carried over the author. Um, again, the abstract, that's a description of this blog, I think. The blog title is IDOS, which is correct because that's, um, that's where it came from. Um, and then here's the URL, the full URL, the date it was accessed, uh, and so forth. So, um, now I'd like to show you um, just briefly how you would bring items over from library searches. So uh, I'm just going to show you the library catalog and then what uh, you do in EBSCOhost. So in the library catalog, um, let's um, search for my favorite guy, John Wesley, because I'm so uncreative. And John Wesley is my default search anyway. Um, so John Wesley, um, we can, let's see here. We can add, you notice now um, that my Zotero icon in Chrome changed to a folder. If I click that folder, what it's going to do is it's going to give me a list of all the search results that's on my screen. So I could go through here and pick uh, whichever ones I wanted to import. If I wanted to do three or four, I've, I've chosen three here. Oh, let's choose four. So I've clicked four here, and um, if I wanted to click, uh, if I wanted to select all of them, I could deselect all, or I could deselect all. Um, but if I click OK, and then uh, down here it tells me saving to new collection, and um, it's adding all four of those records uh, to Zotero. So now I can go over to Zotero to my new collection and I see my four John Wesley records. And it brought, it brought everything over. Um, 
just the way it was uh, from the library catalog. All the information, all the metadata from the library records went straight into Zotero like that. Um, if you wanted to just do individual records, um, you know, say you're doing a search and you click on a on a record, um, and you say, "Oh, yeah, I like I like this one. I want to add this one." You can do it. Um, you know, save to Zotero just the one record. You notice it changed from a folder into a book because um, it's going to save it as a book. Um, so that's uh, another option. Now, if for some reason you don't have the Zotero connector plugin extension, whatever, installed on your browser, the more involved way to bring records over is to click on the Save Record option and use RIS. The RIS format is what Zotero uses. So you can export from the library catalog by saving your record in RIS format. And then you would go into Zotero and click um, File, Import, find your RIS file, and that would bring the record in. But I would only suggest doing that if you just can't get the browser extension to work. I think in most cases, you're going to be able to get your browser extension to work, and that's going to be the easiest way to, to bring records into Zotero. Yes, yes. So, right. So the question was, um, do I have to install the extension on every computer that I'm using? And the answer is yes. Um, you know, if you've got Zotero standalone on your computer at home and you use that, you know, whatever browser you use on that home computer would need the extension on it. You've got Zotero standalone on your computer at work. You also need the extension on whatever browser you use on that computer as well. Um, So that's, um, that's basically how to do it in the library catalog. Um, EBSCO works uh, very similarly. Um, I've got, I went ahead and this is EBSCO host for the ATLA religion database. Let's, um, let's search for Shepherd. Um, that's my other default search. Oh, and it's not remembering me. Um, it's been too long since I got this set up, so now I'm going to have to do it over again. Okay, ATLA Religion Database, Shepherd. So again, um, just like with Koha, when I have a list of search results here, uh, if I wanted to add the search results to Zotero, I can go to the folder icon, it pulls up the list of all the records that are on this page of search results. I can choose from that list. Or um, say I want to um, look at this record. Now this record here um, I want to show you how this works. So this is a record. It's a uh, journal article in colloquium, and it also has the PDF full text available. I'm going to click this here to add it to Zotero. And down here on the right, it tells me that it's saving to my collection, and it's also saving the EBSCO full text. So now, when I go to Zotero, I find where, why are there shepherds in the Lucan birth narrative. I can click my arrow here, and it has already um, attached the EBSCO full text article to it. I double click on that, and there's the article. So I didn't have to 
download the article. It's already downloaded for me and stored in Zotero where I can easily find it. So I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, okay, so are there any questions at all? We've gone over adding items to Zotero. I showed you how to edit an item because sometimes when you're bringing things over, it won't pick up all of the metadata. Um, and you might have to fill in some blanks to correct things. We talked about how to do that. We looked at using the web plugin uh, for bringing items over from any website, uh, the library catalog, as well as EBSCOhost. Is there any questions about that? Any questions? I'm not seeing any questions online either. So we're going to move on to how to use, um, how then to use Zotero for citing things. So when you installed, uh, when you installed Zotero, it likely, it's been a while since I installed Zotero, so I may not remember this correctly, but it likely detected whether or not you had Microsoft Office or OpenOffice installed on your computer already. And it prompted you and said, oh, we think you have Microsoft Office. Click here to install the Microsoft Word plug-in for Zotero, and hopefully you said yes. Didn't do that. Okay. Um, okay. Because when I was looking at the documentation about the Microsoft Word, um, about using Zotero with Microsoft Word, it seemed to assume that it was going to install a lot of Microsoft Word. Um, but Tracy, what, do you have Microsoft Word? Is that what you use? Yeah, it asked me just the one at home. It, you know, it needed a font, special fonts at home, so I downloaded yeah, uh, that. Okay. So I don't know. If you open Word, if you click on add-ins, yes, okay. So you can see here, we're looking at Tracy's computer. You've got Office 2012. Uh, 365. Office, oh, you're using Office 365 yes. version. Okay. And he, um, it's on his Word. He's got an add-ins tab, and there are all of the Zotero uh, buttons there appearing in the add-ins tab. On my computer, uh, we here at the seminary use a very old version of Microsoft Office, version 2010, and um, it, um, it shows up as its own tab called Zotero. So um, depending on what, um, but Zotero only has plugins for Microsoft Word and OpenOffice. OpenOffice is an open source office uh, suite similar to Microsoft Office. Um, so they only have plugins for those two products. Um, if you use Google Docs or Pages, or if you have a need to cite in another kind of text editor, I'm going to show that in just a minute. But if you have Microsoft Word or use OpenOffice um, for your word processor, this is how you would find Zotero. So, um, and you know, remember we're using Chicago style here at the at the seminary now. Now, just to make sure, I'm going to come over to Zotero, and I'm going to look at my preferences. And on Windows, it's under Tools, Preferences. I think on the Mac, you have to click on the Zotero menu to go to preferences. You want to make sure under oh under site it um, tells you where you might want to um, 
that's where it gives you an option if you didn't already install your plug-in or add-in for Microsoft Word or OpenOffice. Uh, you can do that there. Under Export, I'm going to change this default setting for Chicago Manual of Style 16th Edition Full Note. Um, that way I always get the Full Note citation um, instead of the abbreviated note. And I'm going to click OK. So I just wanted to make sure that that was set correctly. Now over here uh, in my Word document, um, I'm just going to um, go ahead and put in my um, footnote. So to do, first thing to do a footnote. I've written a sentence. This is a sentence I need to cite. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my References tab and I'm going to insert my footnote. And that's what um, puts my note number at the end of my sentence and gives me my note number down here at the bottom. Then I'm going to go over to Zotero and I'm going to click this Add Edit Citation. And here's where it's going to tell me I'm going to set my document preferences to full note. Yes, we're going to display the citations as footnotes. It's going to format using fields. And we do want it to store the references in the document. If you don't store your references in your document, when you share your document with other people, it's going to look like machine read gibberish. So you want to make sure that you store the store your references in your document. Click OK. Um, now what it does is it brings up a search bar. So let's say that I want to use that um, blog post that we put in. And so I just typed in Jedi because I remembered that was in the title. And it went ahead and pulled up a, my search result. I can just hit enter. And um, that puts in kind of a, a little bubble placeholder that represents that record. It's the author's last name. Now, if I wanted, if I needed to have more than one reference in my footnote, I could continue and just do another search to put in another reference in the same footnote. Most of you are not going to need to have multiple references in the same footnote, though. So I am done adding those. I'm going to hit Enter. And it formatted my citation uh, for me down here at the bottom in my footnote. Now I am going to want to look, up, look this over and make sure that everything looks right that it put the commas in the right places, that it, um, you know, that everything was typed correctly. And it looks pretty good to me, so I'm just going to move on. So that's how you would do your, um, that's how you would write your paper, how you would do your footnotes. At the end, you would say, I want to insert my bibliography. And it, collects um, all of the sources that you've used throughout, uh, alphabetizes them for you, and then uh, preformats them in your um, in the style that you chose. So yep. So we are um, getting close on time. My clock says 155. Um, I did want to show you just briefly kind of how you would do this if you were using Google Drive uh, or Google Docs. So if we go over here, I'm going to pull up this old document from our Google Drive workshop. So um, basically what you would want to do with um, Google Docs is a, called a drag and drop.
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert my footnote. Then I'm going to open up Zotero. And um, let's bring over the journal article. I clicked on it. I'm dragging it. I'm dropping it right there on footnote 5. Now what that did, though, you notice it did full note, but it didn't put the author's name in the correct, um, correct order. So I'm going to have to back that up and retype her name. Put in my comma and make sure that everything else looks correct. For using Google Drive when you want to do a um, bibliography, you would highlight the sources that you had used in Zotero, right click, say I want to create a bibliography from item, make sure that you've got your correct style highlighted, bibliography is highlighted, and you want to copy to clipboard. You say OK, and what that has done is it's copied it, stored it on the clipboard. So now I can come back to my document, type in my bibliography heading. I'm going to do a Control V to paste it, and there's my bibliography. Now in Google Drive, I don't know why it does this, but it, it brought it, um, it did the hanging indent past the margin. And so to correct that, I'm going to um, click and drag on this blue triangle Try to, and bring it over so that it's um, in line with the one inch margin that I need to have. So that's how you would use Zotero with Google Drive. So you can see it's a... Um, fabulous tool, uh, particularly when you're um, trying to pull together sources for research project. Um, but it's also really helpful to just use as kind of your file cabinet to keep up with um, interesting articles and um, material that you might want to use uh, in your place of ministry. So that's Zotero. Are there any other questions in the last two minutes that we have? Looks like Mike Panzarella is our last person on the webinar. Mike, do you have any questions for us? You can type them at any time. Tracy, do you have any other questions? The only thing I had was to, to look at the atoms and the atoms because of my uh, right. Tracy's right. That's Tracy's computer is different, and so you don't I have the. This, and this was my uh, tool for setting up everything in the full note. Right. Yeah. Tracy's looks different. Tracy has a gear for uh, setting the preferences. And this would be from thing up. Right, that would be insert citation. Okay, and so I was able to do that. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Another question, thank you. And then I think this is the one where you would insert your bibliography. Let's see. The one, that one. Yeah. Yes. And then two, um, looking, at the, looking at the Word um, tools, there's a, a separate one where you can edit your citations. So if you do see that there's something that's incorrect in your citation, you can use the Edit Citation button or the Edit uh, Bibliography button. And then as you, um, if you make edits or changes to your Zotero um, item record to help fix something that's, you know, that you're seeing in here, you can use the Refresh. Uh, button and that's um, so that's what would refresh all of the citations and, and resynchronize them with what's 
uh, in Zotero. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, and Mike says no, he doesn't have any questions. All right. Well, that is Zotero. Thank you for coming. <laughs>